I have a small haul to share today. It's more of a mini haul or really kind of a micro haul, <laughs> I think. Just a few things I picked up last week or the week before, I can't remember, but thought you might be interested. I uh, stopped by the library, my local library, and Taylor and I did, and we were looking around, and our library was awesome, awesome library. And in the uh, front part, they have a like a little library bookstore, which is basically like your typical library book sale. You know how some libraries have them a few times a year where you can get 50 cent books and stuff. Okay, well it's that, but it's there all the time. It's not like a special day where they have a sale. So, um, we were browsing through that section and a couple things caught my eye. I got both these books, they were a dollar each. This is Found and it is a collection from the um, guy who does the magazine. I'll put a link down below so you can go check it out. The Found is actually a magazine that you can uh, you can buy. And it is full of literally <laughs> found stuff. Notes, letters, lists, uh, just any kind of interesting stuff that people pick up. You know, they find it in different places and parking lots. And there is some language in the book because these notes are real. They are from real people and they are saying what's on their minds. So, you know, be aware of that. But overall, it's it's fascinating. You know, it's like it's like digging through someone's trash. <laughs> you just get this little glimpse into their life and 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 usually you know it's a very personal section of their life you know because a lot of these are, are notes and, and letters that have been given to other people and and I, of course I love the fact that they are found you know because I'm a dumpster diver I will admit I like to uh, scrounge around for interesting things to use in art so um, anyway, this was just fascinating. It was fun. It was a dollar. I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, when I started looking through it, my first thought was, oh, man, I wish these were in color. You know, that would be so much better. But then after I thought about it, I'm really kind of glad that they're black and white because I can. See, I can rip some of these out, use them in my artwork, and just color them myself. So, yeah, I'm really kind of kind of glad that it's in black and white and it's on this good paper that'll this will take colored pencil well I can tell so <clears throat> found for a dollar um, check out the link below to their website where you can buy their magazines and learn about them and <laughs> I was on the website this morning and there was this tab at the top that said pen pals and I was like oh okay they've got some kind of pen pal program so I clicked on it and what it is is um, they can hook you up with a pen pal who is in prison <laughs> if you're so inclined <laughs> and I thought oh okay that's nice that's not for me but okay <laughs> so I was kind of scrolling through reading about it and then down at the bottom it said um, don't send postage don't send escape plans <laughs> so I like the found people. <laughs> we could be best friends. <laughs> so, okay, that was my, my one, one book purchase. My second one, this one is not going to appeal to everyone, I understand, but it appeals to me very much. It's called Beautiful Death, Art of the Cemetery. It is a book full of cemetery statuary from all over the world. Uh, you won't find any statues from, you know, your favorite U.S. cemetery in here. These are all in uh, different countries, but they're some. They're just beautiful, and you know. And I'm fascinated by cemeteries. They're not creepy for me at all. They're beautiful. They're peaceful. Um, I just really like cemeteries. And in fact, if you have not seen it, there's a video, a few videos back where. Me and my friend Donna got seriously lost 
in Glenwood Cemetery, which is a big cemetery here in Houston. So yeah, it was kind of funny. We were totally lost, couldn't find where we left our car. But we did get pictures of some awesome statues. So there's that. But um, yes, I bought this for the uh, pictures to use in various projects, you know, as it comes up. I'm going to read this first because it just looks fascinating. So that was my second just from the library. I picked these up from Home Depot. Has everybody who who has access to a Home Depot already picked these up? I think probably you have. If you haven't, you need to go and check it out. Go to Home Depot online or your local store. Um, you can uh, buy these online and then pick them up at the store, which means there's no shipping involved. And if you don't live near a Home Depot and you're afraid that they're going to sell out before you get there, you can buy them online, go ahead and pay for them, and the Home Depot store that you choose will hold them for 30 days. So you've got 30 days to get yourself over there and pick them up before they will uh, put them back into stock. So, um, yeah, anyone within driving distance of a Home Depot should be able to get these. What they are, this is a 24 pack of Deco Art craft paint, acrylic craft paint. It was, if I remember right, $9.88 plus tax. It was a little over 10 bucks for 24 bottles of paint. Okay, that's better than Walmart's, you know, 50 cent apple barrel paint, right? <laughs> And this is Deco Art Crafters Acrylic. Deco Art is a good brand. So this is like the deal of the year. And from what I understand, they usually put these out seasonally, maybe at Christmas. And the regular price is $12.99, which is still a good price for what you're getting. But they've got some kind of promotional thing going on now. You know, it's it's under 10 bucks for 24 colors of acrylic paint. You've got a good selection. If you're new, if you're if you're, I'm, you know, I always think of of people who are doing journaling by fives and they don't have a lot of the supplies to get started. Okay, if you can scrape together 10 bucks, this this is going to keep you happy for a long time. You're welcome, Home Depot. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, Taylor and I went shopping. We had to get some girly necessities. You know what I'm saying? Um, our 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 underclothes were in a disrepair, <laughs> so we had to replenish our stock. We came home. We went to Kohl's, um, which I love to shop at Kohl's because they're cheap. They have good coupons. Their sales are amazing. The clothes are, they're decent. You know, they're, to me, I find them a better quality than like Walmart or Target. They hold up well. Um, and I'm not a clothes person. I, I, clothes are nothing more than a necessity to me. So I just want them cheap and functional and be done with it. Same thing with my undergarments. <laughs> Just get the job done. I don't care what you look like. Just don't make me have to pay a lot of money. Okay, girls, we all know bras are expensive. I'm just going to say it. They are expensive. I don't know why. There's no magic in them. Why are they so expensive? Who knows? So, I go to Kohl's every now and then. I go to the clearance rack, which they always have clearance racks all over the store, which is why I love them. And then I just crossed my fingers that they've got something decent in my size. They did. I got two. Taylor got three. We got a pair of undies and a set of jammies. Okay, so that's five bras, undies, and jammies for like 90 something dollars. You know, normally it, at 30 to 40 dollars a pop, I couldn't have bought that much anywhere else. So yeah, good prices. I came home, I was cutting the tags off, I had the tags all in this little pile here, and I was looking at them, and I was like, oh, wow, they're kind of fun. <laughs> Look at all those shapes. Those will just be cool little projects. So, of course, what did I do? I made a book out of the bra tags. 
Now these are the tags that were cut off of the clothes as well as, you know, these big things. These are the ones that go over the hanger. You know, they're attached to the hanger and then the hangers here and then the bras here with its tags on it. So that's what these big ones are. I just nested them together. I glued them together and here's here's what I got. Let's do a flip through. See this was a separate little hangy tag that I glued right there. I know this is strange. This is not going to appeal to everyone. I, I understand that's totally fine. I'm just saying, you know, keep an eye out for art supplies that are unexpected. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't not use this. It's a squeeze to believe. <laughs> I wanted to actually leave that on my bra. <laughs> you know, who's going to see it? <laughs> okay, there we go. It's my bra book. <laughs> I put some pictures on Facebook, and the one question I got was, how did you bind it? Well, okay, so I'm going to show you how I bound it. Because of the way the tags are made, the binding was a little tricky. These, the ones that go over the hanger, these kind, you know, they've got this slot right here, because that's where the hanger hook comes up through, right? So, what I actually did was just glue them, all of those uh, hanger tags, just nested them together and glued them. And, you know, that was, my, that was my starting point. Then I just went in and glued in some of the smaller hang tags and things. And then, you know, the gluing it together was okay, but I wanted it a little sturdier, a little better binding. So I thought, well, I'll just poke holes right here. And then I had a couple of these um, book binding posts, you know, the little screw posts. I thought, well, I'll try that. Stuck one in there. The post was a little bit bigger than the hole, so it just ripped right through <laughs> and uh, didn't quite work out the way I had intended. Okay, no big deal. Plan B, just use that ripped out hole that I made and wrap some decorative thread around it. And I even, I did one and not the other so that I could show you, in case you want to know, um, and I can't remember how I did it because it was days and days ago, but something like this. Okay, just wrap it several times. At the end, you want to end up with both of your tail pieces are at the front. And then to wrap it around the middle like that, I, I just kind of messed with it until I could figure out how to do that. <laughs> you know, let me see. I think what I did was do a little thing like this. You know, that, what do you call that? Half, half hitch? Is that what that's called? I don't even know. Okay. And then just kind of hold on to it. Slip this under all of my, uh, strings so that it wraps around and goes out the other side. Okay, you're just going to have to trust me on what I'm doing here. I know you probably can't see, but <clears throat> it's not brain surgery. You can do this. I'm convinced I could do brain surgery if I watched a YouTube video. Well, There's nothing you can't learn on YouTube. I'm telling you. Okay, there we go. So just do what you can to uh, wrap it around, and then I just tied a knot in the middle. And I may hang some little somethings off of this, or trim them flush. I'm not sure yet. This is as far as I've gotten in my thinking process. So that is my bra book. Don't judge. You know, we all wear them. Well... <laughs> Not all of us, but <laughs> most of us. So, where do I go from here with the bra book? <laughs> Heck if I know. Uh, I'm thinking that I'll make it a painty, you know, uh, thing. 
we could do that. You want to do that? Let's paint it right quick. I've got the paints right here. Let's just slap some paint on it and see what happens. I've been dying to, to bust into these. <laughs> so here's my chance. Uh, do they all have little, um, ugh, this irritates me. Alright, I'm going to have to peel off all the little, oh, they don't all have them. Maybe I'll just use the ones that are, that don't have the annoying plastic, and that is how I'll choose my color palette. Because <laughs> I'm all about convenience. <laughs> Okay, these all have the plastic covering the cap, and um, I'm not in the mood to undo those, so those I reject for today's project. It looks like we're going to be blue and yellow and green mostly. These are the ones that didn't have the plastic over the top, so that's what we're using. Oh. Uh, do I have... Yes, I've got a paintbrush. Look. It's my glue brush, and it's been sitting in this gluey water for... Probably about a week, but that's okay. And there's my paper towels. Alright. Let's just slap some paint on there and just get it started and see what happens. Alright. And you can probably see my um, <coughs> journaling by fives influence going on here. I've gotten now to where anytime I'm doing multiples of something, multiple pages, you know, I've got 10 pages to do. Instead of finishing a complete page and going on to the next, I slap a little bit of something on every page. And I'm just really liking that. A whole lot. And I learned that from Diana Trout's video. She was, uh, she has a video on her blog that was one of the two that I was watching the day that Journaling by Fives was born. And I just kind of took her concept of taking one media at a time and going page to page, you know, slapping a little here and there as you're inspired. And then I combined it with Ray Missigman's 15 Minutes of Mixed Media. And that is how journaling by thoughts came about. Those two ladies just inspired my socks off. And it's funny because I've watched them both before, you know, and I've seen different things, similar things. Just that particular day, watching them both together, it just clicked. So thank you very much, Diana Trout and Ray Missigman. Taylor and I are on opposite ends of the bra size spectrum. <laughs> I hope she doesn't watch this video. She would be mortified. <laughs> you know, girl, girl weighs less than 90 pounds. It's, you know, she's, she's perfectly proportioned. I muddied that up and I wanted to keep it showing. Oh, look. Problem solved. I can't help but wonder what Victor is thinking about this. <laughs> I have a feeling he's rolling his eyes at me. <laughs> and that's okay. I deserve it. <laughs> Sorry. When inspiration strikes, you just have to go with it, no matter how bizarre, right? <laughs> I think he understands. I don't think I have very many male viewers. I know I have... Who do I have? Victor, Robert, uh, does Aaron? I'm not really sure that Aaron watches my videos. Maybe he does. I watch his on occasion. I don't watch anybody, like, regularly every single video they upload. I would like to. I just don't have time. Uh, who else? Who are the men that I watch? I watch Jim, the Gentleman Crafter, on occasion. I watch everybody on occasion, so. I watch Robert. I watch Victor. I watch 
I'm struggling with a name. The guy whose name always escapes me. He makes the uh, paper watercolored jewelry. <sighs> He's how I learned how to uh, water down the, uh, what do you call it, polycrylic. Because that's what he does. I'm going to think of his name as soon as I stop recording. I watch him. I watch the guy who does the um, abstract acrylic painting. Who, and I've shared these links, shared his link before. I just, again, his name escapes me. I'm not good with names, as you can see. So if, I, if I've learned your name, you should consider <laughs> yourself very fortunate. <laughs> I want this. You know my motto, it's not done until it's overdone. Yes, it needs it needs to be brightened up. It's gotten a little muddy. That's okay. I don't mind mud, because mud doesn't mean that it's ruined. It just means you need to keep adding until it unmuddies, and it will. And of course, it's it will unmuddy easier and you can prevent muddy in the first place if you will let the paint dry between colors, you know, but I don't do that. I just kind of go full speed ahead and whatever happens, happens, which means occasionally what happens is that it gets muddy. All right, now I'm going to let this dry, and then, you know, I'm going to add more colors, and or maybe the same colors, just more layers of them, and then I'll come back and show you how it ends up. All right, excess paint goes in my, oh, zoom out, hang on, okay, my little painty book and it, it will get the daddy van treatment when it's done but not while I'm still working on it I think it's upside down I can't really tell okay okay good enough <clears throat> alrighty I think that was all I intended to show you today a little more than I intended to show you and I've got lots of stuff going on in my brain and so I'm hoping I can get it together enough to um, get those things filmed to show you so stay tuned the end so that <coughs> oh that was pretty <coughs>